this is Lady Boulay, and I hope you're having a most marvelous day. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. And yes, we are commanded to love one another, whether we want to or not, or whether we agree with each other or not. Yo, this is Congressman Jamal Bowman. He represents New York's 16th District in the United States House of Representatives. He was voted into the House in 2021. Now you can look at his face and tell he probably has a good sense of humor. So before I tell you what he did, I'm going to take a little trip down memory lane. When I was a student at Alabama State University, and this is one of the dorms that I lived in, occasionally in the middle of the night, sometimes 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, the fire alarm would go off. And it would be so loud, you would be awakened no matter how dead asleep you thought you were. And then you had to jump up and run out of the building. Sometimes it would be cold. And you would have to go out there and stand out there in the cold till the fire department came and checked out the dorm because somebody had pulled the fire alarm. Or somebody had called in a bomb threat. At any rate, we had to get out of the dorm. And the fire department had to come and go through the building. And with about 200 girls, 230, 40 girls, standing out in the cold. Well, it would be 200 and something girls standing out in the cold, waiting for them to give us the go ahead to go back into the dorm. So, you know, we would be upset about it. And it would happen often enough for me to remember it. So the first time it happened, we were terrified. Some of us were away from home for the first time, away from our mamas and daddies. And here we were about to get bombed. We were on an HBCU campus in Montgomery, Alabama, the capital city of Alabama, during the time when, you know, there was still some racial unrest in the, in the country. So we thought, you know, some white person had put a bomb in the building. We didn't know what was going on. Well, finally, it came to light what was really going on. In our dorm, we had a curfew. During the week, we had to be in by 11 o'clock, and on weekends, we had to be in by 12. At those times, the doors were locked. So if you weren't in, you had to call the front desk or you had to call campus police, and you could get put on social probation for breaking curfew like that. So there were girls who had boyfriends who had cars living in the city. Then they would go out and stay out with their boyfriends now, most of the time, they would have a roommate or a friend that would put a rock in one of the side doors. So they would come in through the side door. But sometimes, that rock would get knocked out of that door, especially if it was a girl who knew what was going on and didn't like the girl. She would just come in and knock that rock out of the way. So when that girl came back at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock or whatever time she came in, the doors would be locked. She didn't want to call the desk, the front desk, because the dorm director was going to bed too. So then they would have to go to the police department. They didn't want to do that. So guess what? They called in a bomb threat. Or they would have, or the girl would call into the dorm and have somebody pull the fire alarm. So that way we all had to go out of the building. And then she joined the rest of us. And when we went back in the building, she would just come on back in with the rest of us. So the fire alarm or the bomb threat was the solution to the problem of a 19, 20, or 21 year old. So would you look at this? Representative Bowman pleads guilty after pulling fire alarm ahead of house spending bill vote. So this dude has pulled a fire alarm in the United States House of Representatives. <laughs> Representative Jamal Bowman pleaded guilty on Thursday after being charged with falsely pulling the fire alarm at a congressional office building, a misdemeanor, before the House voted on a stopgap spending bill to fund the government last month. <laughs> I'm thankful for the quick resolution from the District of Columbia Attorney General's Office on this issue 
and grateful that the United States Capitol Police General Counsel's Office agreed I did not obstruct nor intend to obstruct any House vote or proceedings. I am responsible <laughs> for activating a fire, <laughs> a fire alarm. I will be paying the fine issued and look forward to these charges being ultimately dropped, Bowman initially said in a statement Wednesday after he was hit with the misdemeanor charge. <laughs> I think we all know that Republicans will attempt to use this to distract everyone from their mess. But I look forward to putting this behind me and to continue working hard to deliver for New Yorkers, he said. After his court appearance on Thursday, Bowman told ABC News, I regret Capitol Police resources needed to be used to respond to that. I'm glad no one was hurt. Now he's trying to play it off like it's no big deal. I really regret that this caused so much confusion and that people had to evacuate and I just called <laughs> And I just called it <laughs> And I just called <laughs> Okay, so this is the more serious part. Bowman previously told ABC News the incident was an innocent mistake. I didn't know it would trigger the whole building, he has said. I didn't know it would trigger the whole building, he has said. In an interview with Capitol Police during their investigation, Bowman explained that the door he pulled was usually unlocked during votes and that he didn't tell anyone he pulled the fire alarm because he didn't want to miss votes to keep the government funded. Still, Republicans accused Bowman of intentionally delaying the vote to allow more time for Democrats to vote to fund the government. Accusations Bowman swatted away. He told reporters on Thursday, I was trying to get out the door. I was rushing to a vote. I'm thankful that we have an agreement in place, and I'm thankful that in three months it's going to be dismissed. And now let's move on. So it's really his word against the Republicans. He's saying it was an accident. They are saying it was not. Court documents state that Bowman, Democrat New York, knowingly pulled the fire alarm in the Cannon House office building on September 30th while the House was voting to keep the government funded. Security camera footage reviewed by the Capitol Police showed Bowman looking at the doors which read, Emergency Exit Only Push Until Alarm Sounds. And when those doors were locked, looked at the fire alarm. <laughs> And pulled it according to the court <laughs> according to the court documents. <laughs> okay, so we're right back where we started. He pulled the fire alarm in the cannon building and the Capitol Police says he knowingly pulled the fire alarm. <laughs> So the House of Representatives has voted to censure Jamal Bowman for pulling the fire alarm. And we know that censuring someone is just a, it's, it's an embarrassment move to let everybody know that this person has done something that they don't approve of. Sometimes if the censuring is serious enough, they can place a fine on them. But in this case, he's, he was fined for pulling the fire alarm, but not for being censured. Jamal Bowman is 47 years old. Before he came to Congress, he was an educator, 
principal of a school he founded in the Bronx. He was a leading advocate against standardized testing and his school used the restorative justice model to address the school to prison pipeline. He's a family man. He has a beautiful wife and three adorable children. I've got to admit, I like this guy. I really like this guy. If I lived in the 16th district of New York, I would vote for this guy. I would fundraise for this guy. I would make telephone calls for this guy. I like this guy. The reason being that, notwithstanding the fact that I think it's hilarious that he pulled the fire alarm, but he pulled the fire alarm. That is not a big deal in the scheme of things. He's not running amok in the community selling poison to the children and old folks too for that matter. He's not abusing women and children because if he was, we would know about it. He's not whining about the problems in the community. He's trying to do something about them. So even though he did pull the fire alarm, so what? He was trying to get the votes in to get the government funded because if the government is not funded, we're all going to suffer. And it's silly anyway for them to have to keep doing this over and over and over again. They know the government has to be funded in order to function. He shouldn't have had to go to that extreme measure. They should have sense enough to pass the funding bill without somebody having to pull the fire alarm. So I do like him. I like this guy. And that doesn't mean that I like all the Democrats. I, I definitely do not. But I like him, and I would, I would vote for him. And I did look at his resume. He had a good record of community activity, including advocating for our children before he even came to Congress. There are people sitting up in the halls of Congress who have never done anything for anybody. They just want the power and prestige of being in the United States Congress. Because my husband worked for the government for years. From time to time, he had to go to Washington. And he said they are treated like kings and queens up there. Every night, they've got somewhere to go, meeting with lobbyists and billionaires, somebody wanting them to vote for this bill or not vote for that bill. We have no idea how those people are treated. And that's how come they don't want to leave. But it, at least you should have some kind of a record of community activity before you go there because once they get there we already know they don't want to leave but anyway I do like this guy and y'all I ask in humility forgive me for all of that laughing but it was so funny to me I started to edit it out but I said no I'm just gonna leave it in but I meant no harm so I'll end by saying I like Jamal Bowman but what say you? Let me know what you think about the video. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.